an extraordinary individual. He's made a tremendous impact in the community he's involved with and the lives that he touches. With over 40 years of martial arts experience and several internationally recognized ninth degree rankings, he's been a part of the Arizona scene since 1973. Here is Sheehan Rudy Crosswell. Four weeks. This is not a studio. The studio is where you study dance. Okay. Okay. This is a martial arts dojo. Dojo means the, the, the place you study the way. Do is the way. So judo, aikido, karate do, kendo. Do means the way of some skill. So the dojo is like the building where I practice the do. Okay, so this is where I, I'm studying real martial arts, you know. And so that's just my thing is when someone, you know, like some guy called me the other day and said, hey, I went by your studio. And I'm like, oh, what's well, today? You know, I mean, that's probably like forgotten more than So my, my students, you know, if you ever get, and if I say anything when I go do a seminar, it's, if there's ever a complaint, it's like there's too much information. But my, I'm, my brain is, saturated I can't take anymore you know rather than oh god you know we're just doing a reverse punch front kick you know so and because we multifaceted there's a lot of it Shitaru is a very broad syllabus of karate because the originally studied with two main there's two main schools in Okinawa in karate Nahate and Shurite Shurite is what became known as Shorinru from Shorinru you got Shotokan, from Shotokan you got Wado Ryu, like that. So that line, straight line, snappy movement, power emphasis, that kind of thing. One technique. Nahate, from the city of Naha, was, had a lot of Chinese influence, a lot of circular uh, movements, hand movements, breathing, isometric training, and so on. So that became what, no, what became known then as Goju Ryu. Okay? And from there you had Okinawan Goju Ryu, which went to Japan, became Japanese Goju Ryu, and then you had some offshoots from that and so on. But Shito Ryu is of the four major Japanese styles, being Shotokan, Wado Ryu, Goju Ryu, and Shito Ryu. Shito Ryu is the only one that takes information from both syllabuses, from Nahate and Shirite. So we do all of the Nahate slash Goju Ryu kata. Seipai, Seanchen, Sanchen, Tensho, Saifa, all of those forms. We do all of the Shurite kata, Shorinru slash Shotokan, Basai Dai, Jion, Pinans or Heians, okay, Jute, Jin, Jion, you know. Uh, uh, so, so we're doing information from this syllabus and information from this syllabus. And then Mabuni Sensei, the originator of Shitoru, studied with a Chinese tea merchant by the name of Go Kenki. And from him he got all this southern white crane kung fu stuff. So we do hakusuru and and uh, which is very soft, you know, stuff here uh, type of movement. Yeah, you do a movement with like blocky technique. You know, this idea, and this is like a wrist block and a palm block, a soft movement. <coughs> but so you have this blending, and and of course the syllabus that keeps doing this. So you have straight lines, shurite, shorinru stuff. You have Gojuru stuff, you have Southern White Crane Kung Fu stuff, and then you have um, uh, Mabuni who created some of his own things and eventually from studying with that. He also studied with a guy by the name of Uechi, Uechi who later founded the style called Uechi Ryu, which is an Okinawan style. That came out of an old Chinese thing called Pai, Pai Gai Nan Ryu or something like that, real old, strange thing. and. Um, he was an Okinawan who went to China, studied this very obscure style of Kung Fu, essentially, came back with so much information, added some of his own stuff, and created this Uechi Ryu, which is very different than any other Okinawan karate style. So Mabuni heard about this guy. He was in uh, Kyushu. He was teaching in Kyushu, southern Japan. And Mabuni uh, went with a fellow by the name of Konishi and went down and visited and hung out with the guy for a month or two 
to see what he was learning, took that information, brought it back. Uh, in fact, we do a kata that he created after that trip called Shempa, which is when you look at it, it's definitely Chinese, you know, influence. So Shitaru is, is a broad-based syllabus style and does a lot of grappling ideas and so on. Then we complement that with, all right, well, what happens if you're, we're going to do weapons, you know? Um, and so we use the bow staff and the sai and the tonfa, and uh, there's actually, um, oh, uh, as many as 20 different weapons that they get into. The more common ones are the bow sai, tonfa, nunchuk, kama, things like that. We do things like teko, which are the, the metal, uh, um, in fact, I've got some I can show you there. They're like, they look like brass knuckles. Yes. And uh, spear, nunti bow, um, two short sticks called nitanbo, which came out of using two pieces of firewood. Mm -hmm. And uh, the eku, which is an oar, a boat oar. That's about my understanding was that most martial arts weapons, especially like the Japanese version, came from farm tools to defend against samurai swords. In some degree, uh, some degree, although the Kabuto, the people that created, promoted, studied, and, and so on, that did Kabuto were not uh, peasants, they were really gentry. They were like samurai class, upper level uh, people that got this information from China or uh, several different sources and brought it back to Okinawa. Uh, the catalyst may have been that, you know, uh, the Satsuma clan came into Okinawa and said, okay, we're in control in 1609. Take away the weapons, you know, because we don't want any uprising. So now it's like, well, I got to learn to use my hands or learn to use something that's handy because I don't have a sword. They took my sword away. I have the knowledge of how to use a sword. Okay. So now I pick up a bow, which was used for shepherding or carrying bundles or whatever, and I use it, or I can pick up a, a stick and use it as a sword, uh, you know, whatever. So I can pick up these um, tools or whatever and apply them at the same angles of attack that I would a sword and so on. Sword is the older weapon, you know. I can pick up these... Um, tools or whatever and apply them at the same angles of attack that I would a sword and so on. Sword is the older weapon, you know. But uh, so you had a guy that had tr martial arts training, in other words, it's like the old gunslinger, you know, you take away his guns, it's like war, <laughs> you know. He has the knowledge of how to use something, but he doesn't have the tool, so, so it's like, how do I replace that? Weapon of opportunity. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, in Okinawa, in fact, there's a, what's called a tanto tembe, and it's a, like a little shield and a knife, okay? And the story goes is that uh, this concept of the shield, you know, at one time could have even, even been a pot cover. You know, it's like pick up the pot cover and protect yourself because it's not a big shield, it's you know, small. And then a knife or, or a machete or, you know, a short tanto, they call tanto the short knife, okay? So you had that, uh, like you say, weapon of opportunity. Nitanbo, two short sticks. It's like, well, let me pick up two fireplace, firewood, pieces of firewood and use that. And so um, the one thing about Okinawa weapons is it gives you dexterity. It, 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 like, beyond your hands and feet, can I control this weapon? Each weapon has a different um, benefit. Uh, different range, okay? So if it's a long bow, for example, that has range, but in a, in a small room a bow is no good because it's too long. So now you want something shorter. Um, nunchucks, for example, if you take it, if you look at nunchuck, sai, tonfa, uh, bow, you look at those weapons and you look at the angles that they use to strike with, it's all sword angles. I mean, it's, it, so you study sword, and you study, okay, I'll strike it this way, I can strike this way, I can strike this way, I can strike down, I can poke, and so on. Take those ideas. Now you don't have a sword. Take a nunchuck, strike down, strike down, strike side, strike up, you know. It's just a different weapon applying the same angle. So one of the things you see is you'll see uh, um, somebody stu studying with one weapon, and it's, it's once they get the idea, they can carry that over to another weapon and, 
And if they're studying karate along at the same time, the stance structure, the concept of basic blocks, you know, basic blocks. So you do, so now I have, I'm doing a block here, empty handed, well now, uh, the guy's got a stick or a sword or something, I put a tumpha in my hand and I can do the same block, same action, the same physical action as a karate block, only now I have a sai or a tumpha or something there, something to protect myself so the, so the sword doesn't cut my arm off, okay? So uh, in Okinawa, pretty much anybody who does karate does kobudo. I mean, that's part of the, it was just part of the same thing. They never really separated. Uh, when it got over to Japan, the karate transferred over, and the kabuto, you know, was a separate thing. And so some schools do kabuto and some don't. Of course, when it came to the United States, same thing. So kabuto really didn't get um, a lot of exposure in the United States until uh, um, late 60s, early 70s, when people like Fumio Demora came over. And uh, in fact, I went to a tournament in 1967 in Las Vegas. It's the first time I met uh, Chuck Norris, but also the first time I met Fumio Demora. And he did a demonstration of Psy. So that's the first time I ever saw it. And I had been training since 60, so seven years. I'd never seen any weapons, you know. But um, so he was one of the forerunners in the United States, Fumio Demora was, for, for teaching uh, Kobudo. And they're talking about. I was searching for you know information about Rudy Crosswell on the internet, and yeah. I came across things such as your, your magazine and you know your associations that you're involved with, and yeah. things of that nature. Yeah, we just, in fact, we just launched our website, uh, www. Uh, www. It's actually A Z B U D O K A N. ArizonaBudokan.com. And on there, we have a lot of information uh, that talks about Kobudo, Shitoru Karate, Shinkendo Sword, and so on. The magazine, Dojo Magazine, I started that back in 1992, and it went on for several years and then got bought out by Black Belt Magazine. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and actually now is run by uh, Tiger Claw, but, uh, and they changed it. But, I became the editor-in-chief of that and wrote several articles over the course of several years in there about Shitoru Karate and Kobudo and so on. And in fact, um, you see that one there in the middle, uh, that's uh, Toshishiro Abata, that's my sword teacher. Um, he's a well-known, in fact, he's made several movies if you go back and look at the old Ninja Turtle movies. Uh -huh. And he's done several things with Stallone and, and like that. He's always a, a, a heavy. He always plays the heavy, you know, because he's got that face. And in, in the Ninja Turtle movies, he was the, um, the, uh, in, the in charge of the bad ninja guys, you know, not the turtle like the other guys. Um, but he's an Aiki Jutsu um, sensei and a sword teacher and is the, actually the originator of Shinkendo sword, that particular method of sword very good martial artist and he's based in uh, Hollywood, California.